Hello and welcome to AB Recaps. Today we will show you the 2018 anime show, Devil Line. During her train ride, Tara Tsukasa gets an eerie feeling that someone's watching her. Quickly dismissing the thought, she glances over to her friend Miwako, who is listening to news about murders conducted by vampires. As Miwako fills Tara in, Akimura Shada is quick to dismiss the whole vampire killing story. In the meantime, Tokyo's MPD Public Safety Division 5 is on the move to apprehend a possible suspect for the recent killings. When the suspect proves to be way more powerful than the MPD, special force is called to the scene. Arriving at the scene like a badass, Lloyd Juliana quickly tackles the rogue vampire, but realizes that this isn't the culprit. As Akimura is walking Tara home, he admits that he's glad Tara is single, and even though she rejected him, he's content with just being friends but then at the same moment, says that he doesn't know what he'd do if Tara gets a boyfriend. From the corner of her eyes, Tara notices the same creepy dude in the metro, walking towards her. Sensing danger, Akimura clutches Tara's hand and runs to safety. They stop in a remote place when suddenly the same mysterious guy appears from behind. The guy cuts open his finger which compels Akimura to reveal his true form. He then accuses Akimura of sexually abusing and murdering three women. After denying several times, Akimura fesses up by saying that he did so to protect his bloodlust from Tara. A weeping Tara observes the scene as the guy tranquilizes Akimura and reveals himself as the leader of the special force Anzai Yuki. A month has gone by since Tara became preby to the existence of vampires. Tara can't help but wonder about Anzai as he left in a rush after he lost himself to the temptation of her blood. Before Anzai left, he had told her that he thought he was better at controlling his bloodlust as he's a half-human, half-vampire. While Tara is once again lost in Anzai's thoughts, Anzai suddenly appears on her balcony. Anzai then asks Tara if she wants to visit Akimura. He can arrange a visit. Their conversation is cut short when Anzai is called on scene. When Tara notices that Anzai has dropped his wallet, she goes after him. At the scene, a woman named Yuko is encircled by Anzai's division. Despite being in her demon form, she confesses that while she was cooking with her husband, he cut his finger and asked her to lick it off. This caused her to go loco, and the next thing she knows, she has sucked her husband dry. Anzai, who is an old friend of Yuko, consoles her, causing her to regress to her human form. Meanwhile, Tara witnesses the scene from afar and quietly returns home. At night, when Tara decides to return a book she borrowed from her professor, he attacks her and begins assaulting her. Anzai, who happens to be nearby, saves Tyra by unleashing his demon mode on her professor. Rescheduling their hot pot date, Anzai and Tyra embarrass each other in the darkness of her room. While returning from grocery shopping, Tara bumps into a man. As the man proceeds to help her pick up the grocery bag, Tara realizes that he has the same eye bags as Anzai, which indicates he's a demon. After apologizing, the man scurries away. Later that evening, as Anzai and Tara are having dinner together, Murders are reported in the news. Anzai points out that it could be a work of a devil, and then asks Tyra about her run-in with the suspicious man. Tyra quickly tells him that he was a nice man, and she knows that he hadn't had blood as he had eye bags under his eyes. Suddenly, the two hear a man imitating a cat's voice. Meanwhile, Sawazaki and Juliana inspect a nearby restaurant where the body was found. The manager urges Juliana to arrest his employee Katajuri as he's a devil. Juliana immediately unleashes her demon mode and tells the manager off. After interrogating the man who reveals himself as Katajuri, Enzai calls Sawazaki asking him if there's a wanted devil. Sawazaki then tells him that while there is a missing devil, someone else is just using the vampires to cover up their tracks. When Sawazaki and Juliana are called to another crime scene, they realize the victims are demons. Meanwhile, Enzai declares that he fancies Tyra, but his confession is cut short by a bullet penetrating his arm. After missing the shot, the sniper abandons her post causing Anzai to chase after her. When he catches up to her, the sniper reveals that she loathes vampires as they were behind her mother's death. As the sniper is out for blood, a white-haired guy by the name of Hans Lee appears like Anzai's vampire guardian angel, giving him blood so he can save himself from the sniper's attacks. Unfortunately, Anzai goes buzzuck since he has zero tolerance for blood. Meanwhile, Anzai's team shortly follows him to the scene with a guilt-ridden Tara in the backseat. Arriving late at the party, they witness the sniper in her alley fighting with a frenzied Anzai, who is also simultaneously trying to fight Hans. Believing that only she can pull Anzai out of his state, 
Tara decides to jump in between Anzai and the sniper to stop him from killing her. Sadly, she overestimated herself and Anzai, as he lunges to kill Tara, but is luckily saved by Hans, who successfully apprehends Anzai. This gives the sniper and her companion a chance to escape. As a drugged-up Anzai is being taken away, Hans reveals himself as a half-breed and then flees into the night when backup arrives. Days have gone by since Anzai stopped by Tara's place. She stops by the last place where Anzai was seen in hopes of meeting him. There she stumbles upon Hans who politely greets her. As the two are walking, Tara reveals that she's facing trouble in paradise with Anzai as he has ghosted her. Hans tells her that Anzai is probably beating himself over for his actions. He also tells Tora that if Anzai accepts then he can teach him how to keep his bloodlust in check. Hope starts to flutter in Tara's heart as she envisions a future together with Anzai. Anzai's teammates are huddled in their favorite bar as they watch a news reporter get slashed during the broadcast. A devil then lunges forward to drink her blood, causing panic in the crowd. Even as Juliana is watching the scene from afar, she loses herself and attempts to attack her co-worker Sawazaki. Anzai quickly appears to the rescue with a gas mask covering his face. Amid a panicked crowd is our heroine, Tara accompanied by Hans. When Hans leaves her momentarily to curb the situation, she's attacked by a devil who manages to draw her blood. The devil chases after Tara, and as he's about to strike her, Anzai heroically enters the scene by crashing through a window. After taking Tara to safety, Anzai begins to leave when he sees blood on her. When Tara pleads with him to stay, he asks her to shoot him with a sedative. Anzai relaxes and asks her if she's close with Hans. Tara tells him that she bumped into him on the site as he was searching for his cross. Anzai informs her that the cross is a symbol of the orphanage he was raised in, but he doesn't remember any foreigner or half-devils. He then asks Tara why she's with him, which leads to her confessing her feelings. As Anzai, Hans, and Tara decide to spend the night at the bar, Tara urges Anzai to drink her blood as it will build his tolerance and increase his life expectancy. Anzai angrily yells at Hans for filling Tyra's head with insane ideas. Hans tries to calm him by saying that it was blood that helped him heal. Meanwhile, Sawazaki is called to a crime scene where he finds the injured sniper and her dead companion. In the hospital when the sniper girl wakes up, she finds a squad's Kikuhara Kirio. The girl yells at him that when she's questioned, she'll reveal that Kirio was the mastermind. Kirio tells her to go ahead, but as a repercussion, people will die. A man informs Sawazaki that someone by the name of Katajuri witnessed the death of the sniper. A member of Squad B accompanies Sawazaki to meet Katajuri. When Sawazaki reaches the bar where Katajuri works, he finds a hooded man pointing a gun towards Katajuri. Sawazaki asks his companion to take care of the employees as he chases after the hooded man who's running after Katajuri. The commotion is also noticed by Anzai and Hans. Hans tells Anzai that he'll come with him to help him, but Anzai tells him that he can't as he's way too mysterious. Hans then briefly tells him that his real name is Johannes Kleeman, born as part of the hybrid plan and raised under Onlo's care. As the two are making their way, Anzai tells him that he thought Onlo was simply an orphanage. After the hooded man is apprehended, Kleeman tells Anzai to embrace his carnal desires. So Azaki joins the group, and then Katajuri tells him that he saw someone push the sniper guy. Due to Katajuri's injuries, he's rushed to the hospital. Later, Soazaki informs Anzai that there's a mole in the department. After taking Tara as a hostage, 07, the sniper flees from the hospital. An old man claiming to be a worker of ONLO visits Anzai. He calls out Anzai on his inferiority complex and tells him to get over it. When Kleeman enters the room, he recognizes the man as someone who suggested to him to rub one out as a means to control his bloodlust when he was under Onelo's supervision. Meanwhile, 07 get out of the van to embrace her colleague, a man by the name of 09. The two carry Tyra to a nearby hotel. 07 tell Tara that her colleagues have turned against her. When the news of Tara's kidnapping reaches Anzai, he immediately wants to rescue her but is stopped by Kleeman as they're unaware of her whereabouts. Meanwhile, 07 and 09 are planning their escape when they realize that police have located them. They equip Tara with a stun gun and tell her to watch out for a guy with a birthmark as he's one of the bad guys working undercover and goes by the name of 05. Soon 05 arrive with other cops. He cunningly separates the cops from Tara, and when they're alone he asks Tara what she knows. Tara quickly uses the gun on him and finds temporary refuge in a room. 
she calls Anze and gives him her location. When Zero Five finds Terra, he cynically tells her that he just wants to put vampires out of their misery. As he raises his gun, Terra falls out of the window, but luckily, Anzai catches her just in time. Turning into a full-blown vampire, Anzai manages to maintain a conscious state as he carries Terra in his arms. This surprises Kleeman who notes to himself that if Anzai manages to learn self-control, he'll be invincible. As the two are dangling in the air, another shot is fired at them. Wishing that more vamp-human couples were like Anzai and Terra, 07 directs her attack at the sniper who shot the pair. 09 checks in with 07 as it's her first time killing a human, but she assures him that she's fine. Later, Terra shoots a sedative up Anzai to bring him back from his devil mode. The two reveal to each other that both of them can't stay away from each other. Anzai concludes that he'll learn more about his transformation so he can protect Terra. Then Terra nervously asks if this conversation means they're dating, causing Anzai to chuckle. When Anzai and Terra decide on living together in the bar for the time being, the old man, Akio Kano informs Anzai that his training will consist of him doing naughty stuff to Tyra, while Yanaji and him will monitor his heart rate. After recovering from their awkwardness, Anzai pins Tyra to the bed, but before he can get frisky, he's stopped by Akio. The following night, Akio takes the pair to a conference that is gathered to safeguard vampire rights. The speaker, Anzai Midori, comes across Anzai and tears up. She notes to herself that Anzai certainly turned out as a gentleman. F Squad goes under a massive hierarchical change, thanks to Kikuhara. Ishimaru Megumi enters the bar and introduces himself as the new squad leader. While the crew is skeptical of Megumi's character, Megumi nonchalantly tells them to run a background check on him if they want to. Later, when Terra tells Anzai that 07 reached out to her as a form of apology, Megumi sneaks behind them and commends Terra for this achievement as 07 can help them gather evidence against CCC an organization that operates to terminate vampires. As Megomi, Samazaki, and the others are huddled together, it is revealed that it was because of CCC that the existence of vampires became public knowledge. As 07 and 09 come to negotiate with Megomi in the presence of Terra, 07 demand to know everything about Kenichi Morisawa, the man who killed her mother. After dating up intel on Morisawa and 07 whose real name is Nanako Tenjo, it is revealed that when Morisawa killed and sexually assaulted her mother, it was Nanako who shot him. Before his attack, Morisawa was an outstanding member of the police department. The records also state that after Nanako had shot Morisawa, Kikuhara was the person that justified her actions and urged her to come with him. Meanwhile, Zero Nine confront Nanako if she has feelings for Kikuhara, but Nanako angrily dismisses him. When she's alone, she admits to herself that she indeed has feelings for Kikuhara. The next day, Nanako informs Megumi and F-Squad that Kikuhara is the mastermind behind CCC, and she'll help them take him down. Suddenly, a group of extremists carrying blood surround the streets in an attempt to brutalize vampires. Trapped in the bus, Anzai faces Terra's ex-professor, who wants vengeance on Anzai. In an attempt to provoke Anzai to come out of his calm state, he throws blood balls at him while his lackey records the scene. Just as Anzai is about to attack him with fangs and claws out, Megwama arrives quickly and sedates him. Meanwhile, Soazaki gets reprimanded by his seniors for letting Anzai out in public as his vamp mode has gone viral. The next day, Megumi challenges Anzai for a duel so he can learn about his capabilities. He also draws blood out of himself, urging Anzai to fight him. When he caves in, Anzai begins to combat his boss. In the midst of punches, Megumi tells Anzai, that his transformation might not be kick-started by blood, but by other factors as he's in complete control right now. He then beckons him to suck his blood. Just as Anzai is about to take a sip, Terra comes to the scene and anxiously embraces him. Later, under Megomi's order, 09 try hacking into CCC's computer, but realize that Kikuhara must have taken measures. The F-Squad mutually decides that they'll infiltrate CCC's hideout. The following night, Terra confesses that she was jealous when Megomi offered him blood. As the two were about to make out, the news of an extremist group setting fire to a vampire activist house reaches them. When they reach the scene, Anzai notices Kikuhara and asks him if they have met before. Kikuhara brushes him off by saying that he remembers everything that happened to him, and so should Anzai. As F-Squad prepares to muscle in CCC's base, Megumi orders Juliana and Anzai to stand down as they're currently in suspension. However, if they were to disobey the orders, 
they'll be seriously reprimanded by being strictly quarantined. Later, Tara pulls Anzai aside and hands him a handmade utility belt. She then thanks him for all the good times. Anzai sentimentally tells her that he's glad he met her and gently caresses her head. As the MC, Anzai simply cannot back away from the action, so he forces his way into the raid party. So Ozaki tells him there's no need for him, as there won't be any vampires in the base, so we should let Team Human take care of this, but Megumi lets Anzai in, by assigning him on the lookout duty, and since Anzai is going, Terra and Kleeman join the fun too by sitting in the backseat of the Anachi car. With Nanako as their sniper, the F-Squad moves into CCC's base. They notice dead bodies of homeless people scattered around the place, then suddenly, the transformed devils start pouring in, hungry for more blood. As Sawazaki and Megumi are in grave danger, Anzai decides to risk it all for his squad. He jumps to their rescue and kills the vampires. Throughout the chaos, it is revealed that Megumi is a CCC's agent, and this was all a trap by Kikuhora. Megumi discloses that he and Makimura from B-Squad are undercover agents. Meanwhile, after getting into a tussle with Makimura, Kikuhara picks up the sniper and shoots Anzai. With Kleeman's help, Terra reaches the rooftop to see life sweeping out of Anzai. She quickly draws her blood and urges Anzai to feed from her. After kissing him, Anzai starts sucking her blood. When his wounds heal up, Kleeman delivers a worn-out Terra to an ambulance while Anzai is carried to safety as well. In the van, Makimura radios a squad and reveals that CCC is actually government-born. During her stakeout, Nanako tries to shoot Kikuhara, but her hands give out, giving Kikuhara the chance to calmly leave. In the hospital, memories of his childhood start to resurface. A young Anzai, stuck on the tree, is rescued by Kikuhara, who then takes him in his embrace and gives him a tour of a cell filled with vampires. He tells Anzai that his father, Anzai Tamaki, is a mass murderer. On the other hand, Sawazaki and Megumi are informed that the F squad has been absolved, and due to multiple accounts, Anzai is to be quarantined from society. When the news is relayed to Anzai, he believes that this is for the best as vampires and humans shouldn't coexist. Luckily, Sawazaki knocks sense into his head, which makes him talk to Terra. As the two are saying their goodbyes, they both proclaim their love for each other. Terra tells Anzai that she'll wait for him. Tearfully, she watches him go. That's the end of the season. Make sure to like it if you enjoyed the video. Also give your reviews in the comments section and subscribe for more anime recaps.